Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness, a large piece of mountain paradise located right in the middle of Idaho. It's known as the River of No Return Wilderness because early supply boats could run down its rivers, but the powerful waters erased any thoughts of an upstream return. It was also named for Senator Frank Church, who helped designate more than two million acres as wild country, never to be spoiled by the machines of man. Large herds of elk, 20 and 30 strong, are a regular sight here. They roam through miles of high country and thrive on tall, plentiful grasses. The herds protected by big, powerful bulls. It's these bulls, five points, six points, even seven points, that lure hunters from across the country into an unforgiving wilderness of rugged terrain. All right, we're ready to go. <laughs> ready for a long day. Our group includes three hunters from Florida and Indiana, two local guides, two cooks, and our camera crew, We'll ride in a pack string of 25 horses and mules. And here's where we're headed, straight up. Altogether, it's an 18-mile ride to our base camp. That's about eight hours by horse. We learn right away the riding is not easy. Well, it's a tough ride, but you know, the whole reason we do this is we want to get away from people. And in eight years I've been here, I've never seen another human being once I've gotten back here. The ride ain't tough, but if it wasn't tough, then other people would be around. The ride in is a lot of riding, a lot of walking. Uh, uh, you ride uphill, walk downhill. The country is unique. It's difficult to get to. You uh, need to ride horses and walk a great deal. And I think just the walk in prepares you for the environment, what you will see. But it's not a trip for somebody who is used to city life and nothing else. On top, we can see for miles. These are the Salmon River Mountains. Their snow-capped peaks reach heights above 8,000 feet. The rise in altitude brings with it a chilling change in the weather. Well, it snows every year out here. It seems like we get snow about every day. As we push on through the whiteness, our string takes on the look of a history book scene. The horses, the scenery, and the silently falling snow combine to transport us backwards in time you have a realization of what uh, pioneers and people who settled the West had to go through uh, just by looking at the country and riding horses, not having any motorized conveniences. The fact that it's a wilderness area actually adds a lot to the feeling. Since there's no motorized vehicles, you can't mountain bike in here, and, and you can't even use chainsaws to cut wood. It takes you back in time to the 1800s, 1900s. It's just beautiful. The snow finally lets up when we get within sight of our base camp. The Cradle Creek Camp is just below the saddle on the other side of that ridge. There, canvas wall tents with wood stoves and comfortable cots wait to soothe our tired bodies. You're kind of tired by the time you get here. You know, about the only thing you can do is uh, you know, have dinner and you know, be ready to go the next morning. So we call it a night and dream dreams of big bull elk well within sight. We got a whole mountainside covered with elk and at least six bulls, one of which is a giant bull. The biggest one I've ever seen out here in eight years. Uh, but I don't know if we can get to them without spooking them. The ridge above base camp offers an unobstructed view across the valley at a winter feeding grounds for elk. How many do you count over there? In that left-hand canyon, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. To the untrained eye, this looks like a barren mountainside with only a few black specks against the white snow. But these trained hunters see a spectacular sight. So you look right in the in that clearing. There's a whole bunch of elk. A herd of thirty to forty elk milling around the mountainside. And almost everywhere you look in this whole mountainside is elk. And that's the problem, see? The ones you're looking at now are five bulls. But in order to get to them, 
we've got to be able to sneak up on it. A high-powered telescope helps the outfitters zero in on the ant-sized black dots. They discover a handful of five-point bulls and one king-size six-point. I see pretty good length on at times, but he's behind so many trees that I couldn't get a read on him yet. I think he's bigger than any of them others for sure. <laughs> it's got to be wider than this. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. We've killed five or six of those in my lifetime, but boy, they're hard to, hard to come by. While the hunters discuss their prospects, a change quietly takes place. A thick layer of fog drifts in and settles over the valley. Now it's a waiting game. Yeah, we're going to yeah, have to wait the until the fog lifts. Nothing you can do before that. Geez, it'd be a lousy to work that hard to get up there <clears throat> and then be sitting there in the fog all day and have to waste it, you know. Maybe spook them not even know you did it because you can't see where they are. You know, you have to you have to be able to look down and look someplace, see where they are, keep track of them, keep trees in front of you, you know, or rocks or, or terrain bends. Mm -hmm in order to get down in, in shooting range. So with the valley all socked in, the hunt will have to wait. And I was so looking forward to climbing that mountain. <laughs> oh, oh, Michael, I just don't know how you can deny yourself that. <laughs> we looked around, we didn't see him. At dinner, the hunters around. relax and uh -huh. lay plans for tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to go back up to the top of the hill. If it's halfway decent weather and we can get any kind of a look at them, then we'll decide that we'll try to do to make a hunt on them and get the guys up there where they can maybe get a shot. And tomorrow's another day. Tomorrow's another day, and uh, sometimes we win and sometimes we lose, and these guys have been in on both. Okay, we're ready to go. It'll be a long day. We're ready. At least I'm pan, I'll get the rifle, and I'm ready. Come on, Pete. Let's go up the hill. Elk hunting here is very difficult, and the reason we come here is because it's difficult. Early morning on the third day, the hunters depart for what will become the longest day of this trip. The destination is far on the other side of the valley. The goal is to sneak up the back side of the draw where the elk have returned to feed. Theoretically, the wind's going to be easing up the hill. We'll have the wind right while we're doing that. To better surround the elk, Stan splits the hunters into two groups. Ted and outfitter Pat Hendren will skirt the south side. The rest of us will wind our way around the long and difficult trail up the north side. Some of the trails that we get those horses on are unbelievable. That's almost not a trail. It really is almost not a trail. I'll tell you, it's, uh, it can't compare to what we do 51 weeks of the year, but uh, I mean, it's totally different. Physically, it's very tough. It's rough country, but we sure enjoy it. Now, the terrain was so difficult that in many cases, we couldn't even take out our camera to show you pictures. The horses are now going back where we just came from, and we are going to continue on on foot. They're over there, and we were way over there a long time ago. You, you have to be as absolutely quiet as you can because they can hear uh, uh, any noise that you might make. So you've got to keep your eyes on them and know where they are at all times. And you... Yesterday, they elk come over right through these green trees on the top of that hill. And we're hoping that they'll do the same thing again. So we'll go around this trail, working our way that way, hoping, you know, that we get to look at them. Already the hunters are tired and the elk are elusive. The entire draw appears empty, but then Stan spots a big bull, maybe the six point, just as it ducks behind a large rock. You know the elk is there and you, you're really excited and the adrenaline's pumping and you're really all pumped up and, and you're trying to find it and you're trying to figure out where they're gonna go. And that's what Stan Potts does better than any, anybody. He knows elk better than anybody I've ever seen and he can figure out where they're gonna go kind of help right in front of us. All the signs are here, so Mike and Stan head down the draw. Him and I'll keep working down these black trees toward where the bull is. While the rest of us watch and wait. Right there is where he came down. Right there. Yeah. 
Should have come right out here. Didn't. It didn't come up either. So he must be down. We finally get down to the place on the ridge that we think it would have come across if it was going to come across the ridge. And of course, we're there and we still can't see it. And we can't figure out what happened to it. So we sneak down a little bit further. And then all of a sudden, we look up and down the ridge, the elk is. It's like two, three hundred yards down from where we thought it was going to be. And that's when we snuck up and snuck around and found a tree to where we could watch it from. You think I can get through that opening? All right, there I can't. I can't get quite. And I can't see him now. The elk disappears in a stand of dead trees, but just when they thought they've lost it for good, the elk makes one last appearance. We had a great shot, and Stanley does a great job. It's been a long time getting here. It's real tiring. But you know what? I'm not tired anymore. It's great. It's really an amazing feeling. You go out, you do it, and it makes it all worthwhile. Mike is the only successful hunter today, but the thrill of the chase in this rough and rugged wilderness is what all the hunters see as the ultimate reward. During the year, I frequently think about how nice it is over here, how nice it is in the wilderness, and uh, how nice it would be to come back. It's too much fun out here and too many incredible views, and it's uh, something we'll come back and do year after year. It's a wonderful escape. It's a wonderful escape from everything I do every day.